My typical profit is $90,000 per house. Now, this is for me. Typical profit's $90,000 per house because I negotiate and buy short sales. Okay, these are uh, directly with the homeowner. These are not on the MLS. Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Basically, I do a lot of research. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, and I've got business streams. I'm a chemical engineer. Um, I left my corporate job in 2006. I uh, became full-time real estate investors in 2010. Um, but I am just a small guy. You know, there's a lot of people on Clubhouse and a lot of people in, you know, other locations that are syndicators and they're part of large companies and they, they have a boss and they work for somebody. And, and it's even in real estate and it sounds exciting, but, you know, I'm just a small guy. So I rehab houses. I rehab about five to 10 houses a year. You know, my claim, one of my claims to fame is all my renovated houses have sold in seven days or less, Atlas price or higher, uh, for 11 years. Uh, and uh, my typical profit is $90,000 per house. Now, this is for me, typical profits $90,000 per house because I negotiate and buy short sales. Okay, these are uh, directly with the homeowner. These are not on the MLS. I'm going to repeat this, Jennifer. These are not homes with a realtor on the MLS. If you wanna buy a short sale, you do not go to the MLS and work with a realtor. And that's because the realtor is not trained how to do short sales as an investor, okay? Um, They have already, I'm sorry, but messed it up by listing the home for sale, okay? So basically I work with the homeowners and the lender and I negotiate with the lender. Now, let me be clear. Realtors are super important in this process. I have a realtor on my team, but as an investor, you don't go to the MLS to find a short sale. Uh, and basically, you know, I, uh, I'm a hard money lender, so I've got over $3 million. I lend out of the, uh, my IRA. It's my money, not somebody else's. Um, I lend you all the money to buy it, all the money to fix it up, all the money for the points on the loan, all the money for the monthly interest payments. You need no money at all in the rehabbing process in my lending program. And that's my heart and passion is to help new rehabbers out. Uh, That's my money. It's not syndicated uh, with it. Um, You know, I started doing, um, you know, one-on-one real estate coaching back in 2018. Um, I did my first presentation for John Lee in July of 2019. Okay. A short story in short sales and basically 150 people showed up, uh, and at the end of the presentation, they all got mad because I had nothing to sell them uh, at the back table. And so that kind of launched uh, my training and education that I've been doing since 2019. I now have three workshops, uh, basic, intermediate, and advanced, uh, now teaching other people. Uh, but basically, that's a quick uh, intro you know, to who I am and, and what I do um, with it. I'll hand it back over to you, Jennifer. I can go in then to... Uh, some statistics that you talked about that you wanted to look at, but uh, I will just kind of hand it back to you. Absolutely. So the one thing that I think that's perfect is to kind of give a background on, you know, how uh, I think everyone who ends up in real estate investing, it's really important to understand that everybody has their own path on on how they end up here and, and what that looks like. And so one of the big things that um, I think it's important to share that part of it. It's also really important, you know, one of the things that I started with when I said, I'd really love for you to share about the trends that are happening because we see this so much where people are asking. And like I said, I've been, I'm licensed actually as a real estate agent in Virginia, DC and Maryland. And I wanted to comment on what you said. I think it's really important to understand. I actually have a little course that I teach now that is the same thing as you people. I used to talk about, certain subjects and then people were like, what, but can you teach it? And so I've come up with all sorts. I have a first time home buyer class, but one thing I do is I also teach real estate agents how to work with investors. Meaning that again, a real estate agent is a very important um, part of your team, but you need to understand that like you just explained, they're not necessarily going to be the right source for um, some of the best deals that you might have out there. And also I wanted to, again, the same thing. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a tax accountant. I'm all those things. I am licensed as a real estate agent in Virginia, DC and Maryland. 
and soon to be in Florida. But I wanted to say that everybody is, it's very different on how even short sales are handled. So make sure you understand how they're handled in your state. But go ahead, let's talk about what you have highlighted on the screen now. Yeah, so you want to do some market updates on it. I'll show you something from uh, my recent, um, uh, I got a, a, a monthly group coaching call. So um, it's on Facebook. And so I'm always doing, I'm a, I'm a data junkie nerd, unfortunately, background in what I said was engineering. Uh, and so I really big on statistics. So I present these, you know, all the time, I'm reading these all the time. I post them in my Facebook group, like every other day. Uh, and so this is from a, a recent uh, analysis that I was doing for my group. And I'll just kind of you know, read some of my notes to try to keep it succinct. I don't want to read the entire article to you. Um, so I kind of look at my other computer screen so I can just kind of read, you know, what my summary of this particular report is. And, and like I said on my slides there, anybody that wants my slides, they can just text uh, SHORT to me, S-H-O-R-T, to my phone number at 636-685-2990. And I'll give you all these websites, all the slides you're about to see on YouTube, um, and those on Clubhouse text SHORT to my phone number, and I'll send you the same slides and presentation because, you know, you're not going to have time to write it all down and uh, copy it off the screen or even take pictures of it. I'll send you the slides. But, yeah, it's really important, Jennifer, to kind of keep track of where we're at in this country, where we've been, where we're going. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've been doing this for 11 years, so this is not new to me. But for those who don't know what a short sale is, I'll cover that after I go through some market statistics, but super quick, you know, for those that, that aren't familiar with it, a short sale is basically when the homeowner uh, is behind on their mortgage payment. And if they sell their home, they cannot pay off, you know, their loan. So basically I'm gonna read this off here. I was talking about and explaining what short sales are super quick for people, just for the new people that don't know what a short sale even is. So basically at the end of December, uh, there were 23,000 202 properties with foreclosure filings, okay? This is up 29%, okay? Um, and, and so this is basically, I'm sorry, as of February the 10th, uh, this is data from February the 10th, that foreclosures were up 29% from January, okay? They're up 139% from one year ago. So foreclosures have more than doubled from a year ago. Now, we're gonna say, well, you know, that's off of some really low numbers. Yes, it is. But keep in mind, Jennifer, all through the whole moratorium, the pandemic from March of 2020 to July 31st of 2022, uh, there were basically zilch, you know, 5,000 foreclosures. OK, now there's 23,000. OK, uh, you know, we're up 139 percent uh, and stuff. And, you know, and so, um, you know, if you compare this to uh, 2.4 million delinquencies, in August of 21, the day that the moratorium ended, August 1st, there were 2.4 million delinquencies. 23,000 23, people divided into 2.4 million. Jennifer, it's a, it's a horrific situation out there boiling underneath the, the, the ocean. It's a giant iceberg, okay? There are 2.3 million people who are delinquent on their loans. They've only started the foreclosure on 23,000 people. So it's a huge problem out there. Uh, you know, lenders uh, basically took back 4,000 properties. So out of these 23,000 filings, they only took back 4,000 properties, okay, through January of 2022. But that's up 57% and 235% from last year, the seventh consecutive month uh, with the annual increase in completed foreclosures. So the moratorium ended July 31st, 2022, and they are now beginning that process of foreclosing. Uh, just uh, some of the states with the greatest number of foreclosure starts in January, it's Florida, California, Texas, Illinois, and Ohio. Okay, come on, give me a break. Florida and California, those are beautiful states, but they're the second and third highest states in the United States with delinquencies, with foreclosure starts. You know that are happening. So uh, that's that one. Okay, the MBA, okay, Mortgage uh, Banker Association has a statistic out here uh, that basically, you know, it's February 10th by loan type, okay, uh, that's 3.52% of all uh, conventional loans 
are delinquent. That's a phenomenally huge number. Here's the worst one, Jennifer, that people need to be aware of, highlighted on the screen. The FHA delinquency rate is 10.76%. Jennifer, one out of every 10 loans in this great America are delinquent, okay? They have not made their Very payments. Number. That's amazing. It's horrible. It's horrible. And people think that, oh, I put my house on the market and it's sold in two days and I had 20 offers. And, and all that's true, Jennifer. It's true. But there's a, a society of people in this country who did not recover from the pandemic. And so it's a, it's a terrible, terrible number. Uh, another one here. Uh, so this is a great report. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, I don't want to spend up too much time on just the data, okay? Um, but basically on page four, um, you know, it says that at the end of the year, so, you know, this data is kind of private data. Uh, you know, December of 2021 is the latest report we have, even though we're sitting here in March, and this is on a quarterly basis. Um, and so they've got to kind of, you know, aggregate this data. Uh, Black Knight does this. And so, you know, these are rock solid. You know, this is a 30 page report on it. Now this highlight page four um, that there are 2.1 million delinquent people as of the fourth quarter, December 31st, okay? There are almost 1 million people that are seriously delinquent. That means they're way over 120 days. That means the bank could snap their fingers and they could foreclose immediately um, on that person um, legally because the moratorium did in. Now, snap your finger as a process with the banks. It's not literally snapping them, but you know they can start that process where they go to your state's uh, you know, process in your state for that. And I'm glad you pointed out you need to understand the process in every state. And Jennifer, it's actually different than that. You should need to understand it in every county because each county has its own legal newspaper. And that's where I teach you to find these. I do not teach you to go to a realtor on the MLS to find short sales, it's too late. You need to go straight to the homeowner and you need to get a foreclosure listing and you need to step in and help those people, you know, with your team, you know, with you uh, doing that. So uh, 1 million people are seriously delinquent. You know, every month people are in forbearance and they come off of that, okay? Um, and out of that million people, 130,000 got their loans back on track. Yippee, or whoopee, Yippee. I would say, uh, with only 130,000. 40% of those that have left forbearance, Jennifer, 40% have returned within 30 days. Okay, so you may see these statistics. Hey, so many people got out of the forbearance program. They're up on their feet. Great, right? Well, no, 40% have gone right back into it 30 days later. Worse yet, Jennifer, three months after coming out of forbearance, no one talks about this. Three months after coming out with some kind of plan, some kind of workaround, some kind of solution that we're trying to help these homeowners with, you know, one third of them have failed after three months. One third of the people after three months have failed in that workout program and gone back into it. And so talk about, David, talk a little bit about what that means as far as um, you're getting this data. And I know you said that this is it, it really it's not data that you're getting from the mainstream media at all. I mean, they're still just talking about how there's multiple offers on properties, and there are, that's, that's true as well. But the report that you were just showing on the screen um, and some of the sources you have, talk a little bit about um, where you're getting that information. Yes, very good. Um, like I said, I will send you all the slides and all the links to, uh, you, know, you know, to all of the um, stuff I just said to you, okay? Um, so here is Black Knight. This is the actual website address. Okay. And so this is just some previous data. In August 1st, you know, they went up 27%. Um, you know, Adam data, data Services and Black Knight is the two sources that I go to uh, with a lot of it um, to answer your question. Did that answer your question, Jennifer? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I just muted myself so that you don't hear any background noise. <laughs> no, <sorry>. um, <laughs> but yeah, that was perfect. I just wanted to make sure that people can see, because again, differentiating away from what you might be seeing in the newspaper in like regular headlines that are out there right now versus um, I want to say the underlying story that's just not making headlines. And I don't know what your prediction is. Do you think it'll be by the end of the year that 
that there'll be more and more of a headline, or do you think this will just be kept quiet for well, the next Jennifer? I, Jennifer, I can't speak for the big box, you know, monthly aggregator news data, but I I'm looking at this on a weekly basis, and you know, I and I don't need to predict what's what they're going to say. I can tell you today what's happening right now, Jennifer. Yeah. Okay, so I just had you know one of my students who um, made a hundred thousand dollars on his first short sale. Okay. And then uh, did it, you know, had three, well, he did three short sales last year. Um, and so he quit marketing. So I'm just giving you a perspective of what's happening today, right now, that you're going to see in the future, okay, coming out in the headlines. Is he stopped, you know, made so much money, he stopped doing anything, Jennifer, doing any mailing, stopping anybody. He just restarted and the first 15 letters that he sent out, Jennifer, the first 15. He now has three short sales out of 15 people. In other words, the 15 letters went out. Three people called him and said, please help me immediately. I will, I will do what you say. Um, I will let you be authorized to do what you need to do in your state. Uh, and, and, and everybody in America needs to understand that you got to check your state rules. So uh, just about everywhere in America, uh, the common person like me can negotiate a short sale with a bank. The exceptions are the state of California, Florida, and Maryland. Um, and those you need to be working with a realtor, okay? You have to have an attorney's license or, or have a real estate license, you know, in those. But in, the common person can help these families out and negotiate a short sale. He sent out 15 letters, three people responded help, and they're working on short sales. Another student has seven short sales in one week. So you're going to see this, Jennifer, coming out soon. And here is why. The CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, is overseeing all of this and has been the entire time. They're in charge of the banks. They're telling them what they have to do. They have to follow these guidelines. And I know what those guidelines are. They have stated foreclose immediately on tier one homes, foreclose on tier two homes, tier three, tier five, and tier six. And that's what the banks are doing right now. And so what you know has happened is that you know the moratorium did end, but the banks weren't staffed up to do it. They laid everybody off for 18 months. They, they didn't have, there was no foreclosures. So the law firms laid off their attorney. Now they're gearing all that back up. And so I can tell you right now, what you're going to see in the news is that more and more people are doing that. The CFPB requires the banks to call the homeowner and hound them. Okay. Just like the banks usually used to do or how your debt collector does, you know, they're required to communicate with the homeowner. Now the homeowners are freaking out. Oh my God, for 18 months, I didn't have to make any payments. What's going on? And now they find out that forbearance didn't mean forgiven. It meant that they had to pay it all back at the end. And so the homeowners are now reaching out to investors like us, John Lee and other, you know, you're you know, reaching out to realtors, reaching out to people for help. So that's my prediction, Jennifer, to answer your question. Very well said. I think that it's, um, and I think that's part, I just wanted to have that conversation is that just because you've never heard of it before, it's not that it's not happening or that you're not seeing it in the mainstream media and they're just still talking about the multiple offers on things. So anyway, um, very well said. And also, um, I think my, my audio might've gone in and out while you were talking about there are some states where you do need an attorney to be able to do some of the stuff that you do. So I always want to give that, you know, I know you said it earlier, but just every state is a little bit different, but it's really important to understand that this is possible because number one, I think what you do is you're, you're obviously you're looking to make money, but you're also looking at a way that you can create a win, win, win for people. And so I just think that's so, so important for people to understand that it's not just um, something where you're just trying to take advantage of people that are having a hard time. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't, you, you have to have a heart to help families out. You do not, you know, reach out to someone who's in foreclosure and say, Hey, David makes 50 to $150,000 profit on his short sale houses. Can I do a short sale on your house? You know, Mr. Homeowner, that's not what you do. You have to be, have a heart to reach out and help them in their situation. They're about to lose their home. There's a foreclosure posting and they need help. They've, they've tried everything they can. Um, and it's not worked, um, and they've got their problems, yes, but don't judge them. Don't condemn them for their problems. Don't condemn them for that 85-inch LCD uh, TV they have in their house. It's not your place to judge them. It's your position to help them out of their situation, and then when you do that, the banks are very happy with you, okay? You know, I just had a student who bought a house uh, for $82,000, 
He put $50,000 in it and he just sold it for $250,000. He helped the homeowner out in the short sale from the foreclosure, from losing his home and getting kicked out at this date and time. He then came in and he renovated, rehabbed that house, brought it up to you know, standards that we need in, in society in, in the subdivision to bring up the value of homes and then sold it for $250,000 and, and made over $100,000 because of his uh, skills and him, him, you know, providing a service there to people. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot that you can do to help the families out uh, with it. Um, Jennifer, I don't know um, how much more you want to do on statistics. I can go into what short sales are um, also um, in more detail about, you know, some of that, you know, things, what do you say to a homeowner? Um, I'm showing on YouTube here a screen. This is old data, just you know, so you know, this is in Black Knight from last year. But here's an argument people say: Well, homes are going up like crazy, uh, you know, because uh, of you know the pandemic and home values are rising every single year. Well, here's what people don't understand: that those in forbearance, their debt has been rising also, and yeah. so you know they they say, Thanks. well, uh, yeah, you know, and so it's it's an equation. I'm a math guy, engineer. A, a short sale is basically the, the difference between what your home is worth and what you owe. And, and people go, well, what your home is worth has been rising. And it's like, yes, I agree. I love it. You know, I'm a rehabber. That's important to me. But as a, as a short sale negotiator, as an investor helping families out, the other side of the equation, what you owe has been rising because they haven't made any payments, okay, and stuff yeah. like that. And, and, and so the debt's gone up. And so if you look on the screen here, uh, you know, you can see that this is old data. I, I admit this here. This is from last year, and it's kind of hard to you know get some of this data here. But basically, this is showing that out of FHA loans, 29% of all those FHA loans are underwater. Jennifer, they cannot list their home with a realtor and sell it because they are 29, one third of all those homes last year were underwater. They couldn't sell their home. Okay. Uh, and that's basically, you know, just at the fact of, you know, if they were to do that. But what I want to point out is something here. Uh, back to here. There's a, I'll just probably have to read it. And I can know it by heart right here. Okay. This is what breaks my heart. Okay. If you take people with 40% equity in their home, Jennifer, they could snap their fingers, call a realtor and sell their home today because they have 40% equity in it. Here's what happens with families. And this is the position that they get in. One third of those people will let the home go to foreclosure. They have 40% equity. They could call a realtor and sell it today as is, but one third of those people will let their home go to foreclosure. Okay. And that is because they can't think straight. They've got problems. They uh, medical bills. They have, uh, and so they don't make things are more important in their life. They need you as a realtor to step in and to help them. You need we need investors to step in and reach out to these people and help them. You know, and, and keep them out of foreclosure. Many times they don't want the house. It's too large for them. The house is in bad shape, uh, and they don't want to fix it up to be able to sell it. So there's lots of, you know, situations. So just be aware that. You know, the, the fact that there's a lot of, quote, equity in America, there's not a lot of equity in the 10.76% of all FHA loans who are delinquent today uh, with it and stuff. Anyway, just more statistics. Uh, text short to 636-685-2990. Tap my profile on Clubhouse. You can get that phone number from there. I'll send you all the slides and all this data because we don't have time to, to go through. Oh, David, do you have um, a link that I can go ahead and I can put it at the top of the clubhouse room for people? Yeah, actually, yeah, just uh, they can go to uh, the David Randolph dot com. T-H-E David Randolph, R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H dot com. David Randolph dot com. Okay, good. I'll put that at the top of the clubhouse room as well. But yeah, if you just go through a couple of those statistics, I like, um, but also your um, what you have on the screen, I think it is just really important for people to understand. And then going through an example, I know you've done this before, and it's just, it's so great to kind of go through an example and show how, you know, what you said, I think is also so very valuable in that when someone, I can't believe they do, they have so much equity in a house, but they're so overwhelmed. And the pandemic, I think, is as probably for our lifetime is the one time that people have felt more overwhelmed and more confused and more 
you know, like they, they, there's nothing they can do about the things that have happened to them. They don't feel like they can be caused over any of it. And so they're starting to make really bad decisions in that, like just letting a house go to foreclosure instead of figuring out a way that they could create a win, win, win scenario where like what you do with trying to figure out a way to negotiate and figure it out. So if you don't mind, go through an example would be awesome. And what you have on the screen too. Thank you. Yeah, great. Okay. And you know, you know, Clubhouse, we're always teaching people. We always have to be careful, assuming that they know everything. And one of the big questions I get that I'll just kind of take care of with this slide right here is where are they? How do you find them? How do you reach out to them? Okay. And I teach you to basically go straight to where the foreclosure postings are. So basically, um, you know, a short sale is when they owe more than what they can sell from the house. And so there's usually a pending foreclosure uh, that takes place on that house. And so the homeowner is only gonna have, you know, maybe 30 days or 60 days to get that house sold. Uh, you know, in the state of Missouri, the bank will send out, you know, the attorney will send out two 30 day letters. Well, it's ahead of time to tell the homeowner they better do something, but they don't. Uh, and so what happens is, now, you know, uh, you know, every county in America uh, has to do a legal posting. So uh, the state of Missouri, it's, uh, you know, 21 days, uh, Georgia's 30 days, California, 20 days, Texas, 21 days. Uh, so each state has a certain number of days that these have to be posted. And so that's where you find them. You reach out to there, uh, you know, and, and, and go to the foreclosure posting straight from the county. Let me be clear. I'm not talking about going to WW www.foreclosureforeclosure.com, some aggregator website, but instead go to the county legal newspaper. That's where it's required to be posted in all states, judicial or non-judicial, okay, uh, with it. And so- Talk, um, wait a minute, um, just for a second, because we always go into our legal wording, but talk just a, a brief minute and explain the judicial versus non-judicial. Yeah, so judicial and non-judicial. So that just means uh, that in a state where you have gotten a loan on your house, the bank is going to record a document that tells the world that they lent you money on your house. And so if you miss bank money, okay, the banks aren't in the business of rehabbing houses. So therefore, they have a process to basically get their money back. And that process will lead them down the path of taking the home from you. And in Missouri, you still owe the money. I want to keep in mind, in each state, check your state, but uh, you know, in almost all states, you still owe the money except for Arizona, but uh, you know, they take the house back and you still owe the difference between what they get for the house and what you owed originally. And so in a judicial state, that process means for them to get their money back from you, to take the house from you, they have to use a judge, they have to file uh, documents with the court system. And that means it takes much longer. It can take three months, six months. Uh, heck, if you're in Illinois, it could take, you know, 12 or 18 months or Florida it can take, you know, 12 months, potentially six months. Uh, so judicial means it takes longer for them to take the house back and they have to file uh, documents with the judge in the court system. Now, this is going to blow your mind. Non-judicial. What is non-judicial? Well, that means not a judge. That means they don't have to go to a judge to file documents. So literally, literally in the state of Missouri, all I have to do as a lender is post the legal description in a newspaper, legal newspaper for 21 days straight and the house becomes mine, Jennifer. Non-judicial, it's very quick and very simple and very easy and very scary you know, for the homeowner. So that's the only difference that it makes uh, is the marketing side. So let me kind of rephrase this. Short sales are federal. Everything you do on a short sale is exactly the same because FHA is nationwide, Fannie Mae's nationwide. So the process of the documents that they want to do a short sale is federal. What's different is how you market to find the people. And that is a factor of whether you're a judicial state or a non-judicial state. If you're in a judicial state, you've got you know 12 months to send them letters. In Missouri, I've got 21 days to send them a letter for them to respond. It only affects my marketing, so I kind of want to be clear, you know, on that. But that was a good question, Jennifer. Thank you. I appreciate you making that clear because again, it's one of those things where every state, as you said, and I love the fact that you said every county as well because. 
as you probably are aware, <laughs> and I have learned more and more, like with a state like Florida, I feel like it's um, it's so crazy how different one county versus another county can be in all sorts of aspects of real estate in general, not just short sales. It's just, it's amazing. And I always thought it was amazing how different Virginia, DC, and Maryland, three different jurisdictions could be. But now um, I've been... <laughs> Yeah, been doing a lot more in Florida and I'm just absolutely astonished by the differences. Anyway, so I just want to make sure that people realize that it is different depending on whatever state you are, but also looking at the local, the county regulations and processes and procedures and stuff, it is really important. And then thank you for the differentiation. For the rest of the conversation, tune in for part two of this interview. Hi, I'm Jack Canfield. You may know me as the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And if you want more help in getting from where you are to where you want to be, I want to encourage you to listen to The Jennifer Hammond Show 